guys, how's it going? This is Kazi from cleverprogrammer.com where you learn to code smarter. In this video, what I wanna talk about is something super awesome. So I wanna start it, I wanted to start a new series and I've been thinking about doing this for quite some time. And basically, I'm gonna go on codefight.com and just fight a bunch of people. <laughs> okay, what does that mean? Well, codefights.com or codefight.com is a website where you go and challenge other people to programming challenges, and then you both are given a time, and so whoever does it faster and with less bugs wins. They try to keep their problems pretty simple. They're not too hard, so it's mostly just having fun. Another reason why I wanna do this is because I play chess a lot, so in chess, it's really useful to watch a professional player play these really short games, two minute, five minute games, and by watching, you just get to learn a lot. So I'm hoping that you get to watch me like play against other people and see how I do. I might lose, I might win, who knows? But you'll be learning kind of how to think about code and how to make it play for you. And maybe you can go on this website and play for yourself too. All right, so other than that, Let's get started. We're gonna make this pretty damn fun. So let's go here. Whoops, so many tabs, man. I think it's called codefights.com. Hopefully I'm right. Yes, codefights.com, here we go. So I just got a bunch of points for some reason. And can I change my name? Let me change it to Clever Programmer. There we go. Uh, all right, so whatever, I don't care. I can keep my name the same. Let's see, improve and challenge your coding skills while unlocking the arcade map. Mm, that sounds like a lot of fun, but what I wanna do is head to head. Let's do it, baby. Let's do it. Let's fight. So we're gonna fight against a random opponent and I'm gonna try to rip him to shreds. Or her, but that doesn't sound nice. <laughs> That's not what's gonna happen. Okay, I'm probably gonna lose. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna try to talk through it a little bit, but if I can't, I'll try to talk through it, through it later. So at the bottom, you can see that I have 52 seconds. It's incredibly not smart to skip these uh, time. You, you should just use this time to think about and read through this problem before you get started. Because if you skip this time, then you'd have to understand the problem in the round and you'll lose a lot of time. So I've already lost 30 seconds talking to you guys, let's figure it out. Consider an arithmetic expression in the form of A hashtag B is equal to C. Check whether it's possible to replace a hashtag with one of the four signs to obtain a correct expression. This is a pretty difficult problem. Arithmetic expression ABC is true. We can replace hashtag with a plus sign to obtain two, three equals five. Okay, so basically it should be like A question mark of B gives you C. Okay, that's what it should say. A question mark B gives you C. So what operator can you put in this question mark that'll give you back the result, okay? So let's see, they're giving us some time here uh, and they have some test results at the bottom that we can also uh, run against and check if our answer is correct or not. So let's figure it out. Okay, what is it saying? Let, let's write some stuff down. My comment was there and that was a problem, but if I do float here, or not there, but if I do float here, I know that it should be correct. Okay. All right, so we got this one right, and I got 100 points on this, so let's move on. I am going to say that, uh, okay, let's just rate it up. It was really, I forgot that you can't do comments. Comments count as a source code line, which is kind of annoying. Okay, so given length of triangle size, check if it is isosceles, isosceles. Hmm, we should get some music in here, right? But 
I'm not gonna worry about that right now because on my chess channel I ended up getting some copyright issues so we're gonna stay away from music for a second but in the next videos we'll probably have music okay so I have sides 4 3 2 the output should be isosceles triangle size is equal to false 5 3 5 the output should be that um how is isosceles triangle described? I think it's if the two sides are equal and one is different, right? So I basically have to check that. What do I have to check? I have to basically check that I have three inputs. And um, what should I say? What should I say about it? In, in isosceles triangle, you have to have two sides equal and one side different, okay? So let me just read my test cases just to make sure that I, that's right, false, true. Okay, so what code do I write to make sure that that is the case? Hmm. So if I sort them, then that should mean, how does sort get, is it sort, does it sort here? Let's just check if sort, uh, sort the dot sort method sorts it in an ascending order or descending order. So I just wanna double check that. So let's call this X and call, or sorry, what am I doing? X is equal to this list. And then let's uh, sort X and let's call X and let's see what it does. And okay, when you call sort on a list, it essentially puts in an ascending order, the dot sort method. So if it's an ascending order, then I know that either the first two are equal and the last one is different, or the last two are equal and the first one is different. Mm. Is there a smarter way to check this? Can I call unique elements and get back? If my number of unique elements is two, right? If I have one, two, and three, the other guy is at score 200, so he's winning right now, but let's just go through this and let's see, maybe we'll win. So if I call unique elements, I should get back three unique elements, right? If I call set on it. Now, what if I call set on this, right? I get back two unique elements. And in the case that I get two unique elements, then I know it's an isosceles triangle because two sides are the same and one side is different. That's what two unique elements would mean. So I think I am just going to, uh, you know, I don't even need that sort line that they have up at the top. I'll say if, the length of uh, calling set on sides is equal to two, then essentially give me true. I actually don't need any of this code. I can just write a one line solution and that should work, right? I can essentially remove all this code and I can say return len of sort, or sorry, what was it again? len of um, set of the size is equal to two and that should return true or false. Yeah, so I said, but basically you can see it's whining that it needs to be exactly that line, those amount of lines. Okay, uh, fun problem. And I'm gonna give it a thumbs up. Good job guys, that was good. Okay, now we are on round three and the, the score is equal so far. So he has 200 and I have 200 and we are on round three. So let's, let's check it out. So what do I wanna do here? I wanna check if it's increasing sequence. If it is, I return true. If it isn't, then I return false. How would I check if something is an increasing sequence? So here, this is strictly increasing sequence. Uh, one is less than three, which is less than eight. Here, two is not less than two, so we just stop and we return false, right? Because two is not less than two, 
and here 2 is less than 3. So this is fine, but this part is not fine. So essentially, I need to write something like a bubble sort. If you guys know what that is, you'll be on the same page as me. But if you don't, essentially, I want to go, I want to do pairwise iteration, and I want to check each of them against each other. Okay, so let's go and write something like that. I want to go check each of them at the same time, and check if the previous one um, is smaller than the next one. If it isn't, then I just want to return false. Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna let's I'm gonna write a little bit of fancy fancy schmancy code here. So I want to say if previous, comma next. In zip sequence starting from one all the way to the end. No, that would be no no no. It should be actually all the way up to the end, but excluding the last one. And then I want to say sequence from one to all the way to the end. And then I want to say, so my previous is going to be the previous guy, next is going to be the next guy in the list. And I want to just go and check them against each other. If previous, um, right, if I if not, so if previous is not less than next, then return false. And if you make it past all those checks, I want you to return true. Okay. So this is going to work. And you can see that I passed all of those and I'll hit submit. So I got 500 points. He's at 200. I got 300 points for the last one. And I got done before him as you can see. I will go in a little bit more depth, depth and explain it. This was great. Uh, required knowledge of bubble sort type of stuff like pairwise iteration, right? And I'll hit next. And so, okay, I won. Why did I win? Well, I'll go over and explain it, okay? So check it out. I got a beautiful badge. I'm at trainee four, 20 wins. So you can play me, okay? I'm not mean. I'm not gonna be mean. I'll like write nice responses to you and tell you where you could have done better, or hey, you might just come and crush me. Who knows? Uh, let's share this on. Where should we share it? Let's share it on Google. We did something cool, right? Let's just share it. Oh, I have to write my own comment. Look at that beautiful coffee drinker. All right, let's get out of here. Next and close, beautiful. That's awesome. So why did I win? Because he took 27 minutes to complete it and I took 11 minutes. So I'm going to explain the last bit to you guys and if I f remember, I will simply put it in as a uh, note, note for you that you can actually look at. So the last problem was check if things are in increasing sequence, right? So check strictly increasing sequence. So what did I write here? This cryptic looking code. Well, here's how this works, okay? Here's how this function works. First of all, you have to understand how zip works. Zip runs through two lists at the same time. That's what I like about lists. So let's say that you have a list uh, called one, two, three, four, five, or um, let's just make it like something different, okay? Let's just say something like this. 15, five, seven, and that, okay? Uh, let's call this list prices. And then you have a list called fruits, and let's, uh, let's call it banana, we have Apple, pretty expense, expensive Apple, $15. We have another thing for $5, Kiwi. Uh, we got strawberry for $7. And then we have uh, apricot, <laughs> running out of fruits here. So this maps to like banana, this maps to this, right? Like they're in this each position, like zero position matches zero position, first matches first. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run through both of these lists and print out banana and its price at the same time. 
how am I gonna do that? I'll just do this. I'll say price, a comma fruit in zip. And I will say the list prices and then the list fruits. And I will say print price, comma fruit, right? So I'll hit run and you can see that it prints the price and it prints the fruit, okay? And it iterates through both of the lists at the same time. So that's what's nice about zip, um, right? It, it'll, it's the zeroth index of the list that starts with 10 and then it's at the zeroth index of fruits at uh, index zero. And so the first time we iterate through the list, price becomes 10, fruit becomes banana, and the string banana, I'm just lazy to put quotes around it, but fruit is banana. Okay, I'll just put it. <laughs> and price is 10, okay? And that's why you get this out there. So that's what zip does. It allows you to iterate two, through two things. So what did I do? What is this part here? And why is this so nice? Here's what it does, okay? So I wanna check a, a strictly increasing sequence. I'll actually leave this here for you guys, like as notes or something. So I'll, I'll just say price comma fruit, um, how to use zip function. And now let's talk about it, okay. So for, what was I talking about? Okay, so here, let's say you have numbers and you have them like this, one, five, um, six, and then let's say you have four, okay? And what you wanna do is go through it and say that this is not in an inc um, strictly increasing sequence, right? Because you can see that it's not one, five, six, four. This is not higher than six. So this is not in, an, uh, in a strictly increasing sequence, right? So not a strictly increasing sequence. So what do I want to do? I want to iterate through this and just check each of these. I want to check one against five and see if one is less than five. If it is, I want to go on to the next iteration. I want to check five against six. If five is less than six, then I want to move on. Then I want to check six against four. If six is less than four, I want to move on. However, in this case, six is not less than four. I want the iteration to stop and I want it to return false at this point when we're running the function. So. How do I iterate through this in a nice way? Well, you can use all kinds of indices and stuff, and if you write this in C, C++, you're gonna have some like ugly code, but it'll work. But you have to do a bunch of funky stuff. But in Python, you can have some really elegant Pythonic ways to run through this. Uh, it, essentially, it's called pairwise iteration, right? So I'm doing, uh, I'm iterating pairwise. So I wanna do one five, then five six, then six four. It's almost like a design pattern. It's something that, um, you have to do quite a bit. So it's good to understand how pairwise iteration works. So what I did with this sequence of up to negative one and sequence starting from one to the end is this. I take this list and what is sequence of one? Sequence of one or sequence of up to negative one is this, that, okay? So that's that list. And then what sequence of one to the end, right? One all the way to the end. It's it's this. It's um whoops. I want to start from this to five six four. Now if I iterate through this list, you can see that I have one comma five, one and five right here. So zip will allow me to get one and five at the same time. Then you can see that the next pairwise iteration is right here, five and six. Zip will allow me to look at five and six at the same time. It'll be at the index one in both of those lists. And then at the end, I wanna go through the pair six and four, and six and four is right there. So by constructing this and using zip on it, I get to iterate through both of them at the same time, okay? And then I can like check if, uh, so. and then I just label them. So previous here, right? If I'm uh, if I'm zipping through this, right? If this is like this, uh, 
If I'm zipping through here, previous is going to be one and next is going to be five. And then I just check previous against next, as you can see here. So I say, is previous less than next? And I say, if previous is not less than next, then I want you to return false and stop right there, okay? And essentially that means if previous is equal to or greater than, and that would imply that we don't have a strictly increasing sequence. So you can see that's what I do here, and then I return false. Uh, so yeah, if I did previous, right? If I had if not previous less than next, what would this mean? Okay, so I, I iterate through it. First time I have this being one, and I have this being five, right? One from here and five from here. I'm iterating through both of the lists at the same time using the zip function. Is one less than five? Yes, it is. So not true gives you false, so we don't execute line six, you know, the return false statement. Then we go back in the for loop. Then previous becomes five, next becomes six. So this is five, and next is six. Whoops. Is five less than six? Yet is, yes it is, so not of that gives you false. And this whole thing evaluates to false, which means that you don't execute the block the body of the if statement. And then we run through it one more time and previous becomes six and next becomes four and six is less than four is false, right? So that's false. Calling not on false gives you true. This whole thing evaluates to a true and then ultimately it executes the body of the if condition and you get back false. Whew. Okay, so that's what it was. Uh, that's what my code was doing. I'm just gonna leave these comments. I don't know how useful these are, but I'll just leave it. Um, that's essentially what my code was doing and it was able to get a list and check if it was a strictly increasing sequence. All right, so hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you loved it or you liked it, comment or subscribe or like or share whatever you got to do have any questions post them up there i'm really crazy about this i love responding to every single person i mean i would even like go to the point of you know just helping you out I'll, like tell you what code to write and you know really help you out so i don't want you to be stuck talk to me okay if you're ever stuck i am here for you that's what i do okay i love doing this i absolutely love coding there's probably nothing more than coding that i love right now i like jujitsu but um, i like coding more so yeah hopefully this makes sense if it hurts your brain that's totally fine especially this uh, pairwise iteration thing it would kind of suck understanding it at first you're gonna be like oh my god my brain hurts but once you get it it's so nice it's so nice, you guys. You're gonna you're gonna love it. You're gonna enjoy it a lot. These are the type of questions that coding interviews are gonna ask you. If you're going to a coding boot camp or you're trying to get a coding job, they're gonna ask you these kind of questions. So it's good to get exposure to them in a playful way, right? You're not reading it from a book. I mean, look at how fun it was. We went online, we competed against some random person and we had time constraints and then we beat them and it was awesome and now we're just talking about it. It's much better to do it like this rather than being forced to have it shoved down your throat, you know, cause you're trying to cram it in to get your new job or something. So by making it fun and play, you'll actually learn it rather than learn it in school or some academic setting where you're not having fun, okay? So this is helpful for you if you're a college student, if you're thinking of changing careers, or if you are even in high school or younger, you know, this is just helpful to you. This is gonna make you a better coder and all of that stuff. Okay. All right, guys, I love you guys so much. Um, I'll try to put this in, I'll, I'll try to put this, I'll, I'll, let, let me name it right now. Code fight session one. Okay, for a clever programmer. And I'll save this for you guys and I'll put it in the links in the YouTube uh, link or if you're watching it on my website, cleverprogrammer.com and you guys can watch it and enjoy. All right, 